Yeah, I'm recording. Recording. Yeah. Now the conversation we had. The conversation is being from, recorded. From the uh, has been recorded from the hotel yeah. to here in regards to you know a lot of Black Americans they would prefer Ghana. They say Ghana. Yeah, because Ghana promotes it better and they're more about that and smaller. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, they got independence three or four years before most of the other states. Mm -hmm. in Eighteen, I mean, nineteen fifty-seven. Nigeria is October 1st, 1960. Mm -hmm. And I think, other than Liberia and Ethiopia, all the others followed, unless you want to call the White Republic of South Africa. Uh -huh. <coughs> Which, you know, it wasn't until Mandela came out to head that ANC government. But uh, almost everybody else is 1960, 61, 62, 63. All the way up to Zimbabwe, 1980, right? But I know you were discussing how, and I and I said it as well, that once Nigeria gets together, the whole black world. Once Nigeria is successful, the whole black world yes. will experience we'll success. Suit. Will follow we'll suit. suit. Exactly. We got 200 million here. Right. And what they call Nigerians, it's a Latin word that means black area, by the way. <laughs> okay. What the black Aryans are, they scour the entire earth right. for money or making a living, whatever. Anywhere you go, you find a Nigerian, just about. Right. In some cases, you go to a small lot, Greek island, for example, and the only good restaurant on the island will be owned by some evil guy from Nigeria, you know, mm -hmm. and doing things top rated. So, yeah. Most of the tribes of Africa ended up here. Okay. Either in modern or ancient times, for that matter. Because if you trace the pharaonic line of Kemet, who the Europeans call Egypt. Right. It comes back to West Africa, to the Dogon tribe and the Telebesi Mountains. And of course, here, the weather is much better. And naturally, all the tribes of Africa ended up here. If they were travelers at all, no matter how long ago it was. If it wasn't for the slave trade, Nigeria would have a billion people, man. Think about it. Yes. It's 200 million now. When I came in 1988. So you've been here since 1988? Yeah. As a black I American? I came in 88, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in 89, they had a census. It had 88 million people in 1989. Now there's 200 million. Wow. That's more than double in how long? 20 years? 25 right. years? More than double. Uh -huh. That's never happened on the face of the earth. Think about it. And they say AIDS is the epicenters in Africa. If that's true, this place should be... Wiped just, out. Yeah, because Nigerians go all over and yeah, we'd be doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that myth is, all, is gone. They planted that stuff out of Fort Detrick, Maryland, you know. And they keep trying to bring it back, and they keep saying Congo. You know, it broke out in West Africa. And a couple of miraculous things happened amongst that event. The uh, first thing was the white coats, you know, the Western scientists, right. went into the border near uh, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, and Guinea, and that's where it broke out. Mm -hmm. They inoculated the children and the children caught it and then it got out and they caught on to it and they started beating those white coats up and sending them out of their countries then they had a Liberian guy who had a US passport his sister died of it he supposedly handed her and buried her and then he goes and says he wants to be treated gets in the Monrovia airport to fly to Nigeria, and they got him on CCTV here. Yeah, yeah, go on. And at the time, there was a doctor's strike, a medical strike going on. Now, he has a U.S. passport. He wants to be treated. Why didn't he fly his ass to the U.S. and be treated? Right. I don't know. Yeah. And he said he used to work in the Ministry of of uh, finance. 
I know. They're blocking me. Let me ask you this, uh, John. What about now, black Americans who are considering Ghana yeah. over Nigeria? Well, it depends on what they're trying to do first. Okay. Can we can we uh, package that a little bit? Like, uh, I mean, Ghana's much smaller than this place. What are you trying to do if you go to Ghana? Now, Ghana is more about the Pan-African thing on the lower level. And there's a lot more of us. It's like we're driving down the street now. Right. By now, you would have seen 10, 15 black Americans walking around in Accra. Correct. But you don't see that here. We're swallowed up here, so to speak. So, they've got this uh, policy that's primarily geared toward black Americans coming and buying land and building bed and breakfast in. They really don't like have a pond. They have this right of a bowl, but there's so much red tape. Yes. Which is not the same thing as, oh, you, you back home, here's your passport. Right. Exactly. Now, what about... Fill out the form, pay us, take it back with you. You do what you want with it. Uh -huh. That's where we got to get to. You know? Mm -hmm. Now... Why'd you come to Nigeria? Now, I know I people thought you were crazy. Yeah, I know people thought you were crazy. Yeah. I just came to visit... Nigerian classmates mm -hmm. from university days and high school days. Uh, from my first Nigerian interaction was in Huntsville, Alabama, where I'm from. And a whole slew of Nigerian students came to A&M in about 1975. They just mm -hmm. boom. The government got had a whole bunch of money and sent them abroad. You know, in summer of '73. There were very few Nigerians at Alabama A&M. I was mm -hmm. there for Upper Bound. Okay. By 1975, there might have been a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I met a guy, Paul Enney, and his brother. I moved to Houston eventually. Now, Houston has the largest, uh, largest Nigeria, population outside of Nigeria. Outside of Nigeria, and they say London, but I think Houston has more now. I think they do. Houston does. Yeah. This fella's house, this white house here. Right here? Yeah. This okay. Famous number seven. You want to go inside? Oh, yeah. You got to go inside the house. Yeah. That's where he's buried in that thing right there, that pyramid. Oh, right here? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going to go inside Please Famous House. Please make 24 hours reservation in advance. Oh, wow. To access the rooftop bar. Oh, okay, okay, so we're good. <laughs> so we're going to go into Fela's house and yeah. uh, we'll finish this conversation once we come out. There was a wall all the way here and that was the, mm -hmm. the property. Uh, the we'll, we'll let you know we're recording by the way. Yeah. We got to no finish our, uh, our convo so we're leaving the Fela uh, Museum. Fela. Fela. Fela, I'm sorry. That's my... Uh, American well, a lot, accent. A lot of them did. They, even the promoter that came and took fella in '89, '90. Did you put the light feeling. in the back? Oh. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go out this way instead of that. Ah. We were just speaking on uh, Ghana or Nigeria. You chose Nigeria, yeah. and a lot of people would think, you know. Because of the bad reputation that Nigeria has, the bad stereotype, which I'm changing. I want to change that bad stereotype. I absolutely love Nigeria. <clears throat> yeah. I love Nigeria. If it wasn't for Rawlings, uh -huh. Ghana would be in pretty sad shape, in my personal opinion. Okay. But you know what he did, obviously, right? What did he do? He, he did a coup against his superiors. Right. After they caught him and put him on trial for... Uh, Treason, I think? Probably. And their mistake was they broadcast Rawlings' trial on TV. And mm -hmm. when he was defending himself, all the people, and especially the youth and the students, they agreed with Rawlings. Right. So Rawlings was sentenced to death, and the students came and snuck him out of the prisons. They hit him in the dormitory rooms. They couldn't find him to execute him. 
I didn't know that. Yeah. And then they sided with him to do the first coup, which is really the people taking over, and he was the leader. He was a paratrooper. And he got on the, all the general's cases for stealing and corruption and all the rubbish they were doing. did a coup and then cleaned the military out. He did not retire. He didn't promote himself uh, any further than what, staff sergeant or whatever. Uh, flight, uh, flight lieutenant. Flight lieutenant. He kept the same rank. And then he said, okay, I'm going back to school. And he let the civilians come back, am I correct? Yep. And then they messed up. So he came back. Two years later, it threw them out. He said, he reluctantly, I've come back. Had he retired, he was not able to do that. But he said, no, I'm going to school to the freshman. And then he had to deal with the World Bank and IMF and all that. And it was hard. He was real skinny back in those days. Slowly. Built it back up with some integrity in the system. And uh, they love him till today. Even though he was kind of controversial with his last presidency, he kind of wanted his wife to take over as president. Am I right? Yeah. And she didn't win, from what I understand. Yes. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, green is not working. So Nigeria is much, much, much larger. Ghana has what, 27, 28 million people. Right. And this one has 198 officially, but by the end of the year there'll be 200 million. So the sheer numbers tell you the story. Now Ghana and what's now called Nigeria, formerly called Slave Coast, sold a lot of us. 50% right. of the transatlantic slave trade came out of what's was slave coast now called Nigeria. Ghana was responsible for about 17% of it. Right. They kept better records. Mm -hmm. What um what kind of I guess issues have you faced here or any issues at all or any problems or any issues I've trials? Just in, just in general, just any problems or trials or issues or frustrations, you know? Well, I mean, I can make an epic film out of just my ordeal. Okay. If I put me and a handful of other black Americans uh, together, our stories, man, it would be hilarious and uh -huh. funny and you cry to, you know, from some of the idiosyncrasies right. the world. Um, the first part was the getting past the language. So you speak Yoruba? No, I speak broken. Broken with pidgin, Because with pidgin or broken, you can speak to everybody in the whole country. Okay. If you learn one language, you can speak with one ethnic group, basically. I don't like speaking it because it's a broken European backwards type thing, but that's what was used and still used by indigenous. And even a lot of the elites still speak it. Because uh, how do you communicate with the masses? You have to come down to that level. So to speak. And once you know some of it, it's like, oh no. It's one thing someone speaks uh, Yoruba mm -hmm. or Igbo or Hausa. It's another thing they speak the real local Broken pigeon English. That's that mall. Right. That about. So, what are you currently doing now in Lagos? Yeah, I thought you knew. I'm trying. Well, well, I, I know. I'm just saying the people. Oh, okay. You know, who are watching. We're gonna watch this. Yeah, I, you know, I've been here a long time, and for ten years I've been working on this monorail transportation. Have you had any success with it? Uh, yes, we have a signed right away agreement. Oh wow! As a so 75 kilometers mm -hmm. uh, on federal roads and then the 
state has offered us 60 kilometers on state right away. We still overlap some of our right away. Are you allowed? Are you allowed to discuss numbers or anything I want? Okay. So how much? You know, people want to know money. Like how much money? Well, it, we're are you, kind of fortunate now that we have a bill transfer agreement. We have to go sign off on with our tech partners. They're going to come in build the first 12, 14 kilometers with their funds mm -hmm. based on a guarantee of how many passengers will be paying fares every day. And I said, as long as you have 60, 65,000 passengers a day and we're charging 50 cents, we can pay them back over whatever that gives them. Mm -hmm. we can, we'll be able to carry more than that. Wow. The system will be able to carry 30,000 passengers per direction per hour. Two directions is 60,000. Mm -hmm. So in less than two hours, we'll get 65000 assuming full capacity mm -hmm. and demand. But we have to be sure those first 10, 14, 15 kilometers go where people really need to go. You don't want to just take them somewhere to nowhere. And any place you put up six kilometers along our right-of-way, it will make money. But obviously, we want to go to the highest return sector. And we've decided on two different quarters for that. It's a matter of do we start on state right away or federal right away or do both. So as a black American who's considering relocating to Nigeria over Ghana or Senegal or Kenya, like what, what would be your advice? What is that person or group trying to do? And I'll give you an answer. Other than okay, there you go. Here. Okay. What okay, do they you. want to do? Okay. And then I would just say, generally, okay, I would say Nigeria to a point, but what do they really want to do? That, that, now I would say, go here rather than there. So what do that person want to do? Okay. Uh, see, I, I'm not sure what, see, that's the thing. I don't know what a lot of black Americans, like when they go to Ghana, I know some people have opened, have gotten to hospitality. I know um, yeah. some have gotten into, want to get into farming. Uh, me, I'm going to do probably more like media. You know, because again, like you said, there's 200 million. This is the largest black country on the planet. If you want diversity and access to more people and more wealth. Right. Or more development. All the richest black people are here. Right, exactly. Yeah, but you're just down with the Pan-African thing. It's like... Nigerians don't have the kind of time that the Ghanaians would have. Nigeria is more about making money. Right. Surviving and then making money. Ghana is, okay, make a little money, uh, have some respect about yourself because it's small and you can't really, you know, disappear uh. into 200 million people mm -hmm. like you can, do. you can't really disappear there. Correct. You know I mean, you'll be known. Then again, being a black American and doing whatever you do, mm -hmm. You're going to get known anyway, no matter where you go. Correct. There's just a lot more of us in Accra, for example. Correct. So. So if if you just want to chill and live the Pan African life, you would suggest Ghana. Uh -huh. But if you're yeah, work, you want to work English. and speak English. Yes. But if you want to work and grind and you got a plan, you could get richer in Nigeria. Is that what you're saying? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. Right. Are uh, you trying to do? What, there's one thing I'd like to do: I'd go to Ghana, mine gold and mint gold, mm -hmm. and create a currency for all uh, Africans and diaspora, diaspora in gold and silver coin. Mm -hmm. Now, Ghana's the best place. Okay. There's gold in Nigeria, but there's more red tape to get to it. There's more freedom about doing things like that here. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, what are you really trying to do? Do you want to be able to, well, on a moment's notice, get on a non-stop flight to the States? Like, we, we can do that out of both. Yeah. Out of Nigeria and, and Ghana. Uh, which airline out of Ghana? Uh, Delta. Flies direct to NYC. New York, and then here you fly straight to Atlanta. Right. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I know they've been swapping it up and down. I flew United the last time. We had a layover somewhere. Accra for one hour. Mm -hmm. 
we went, uh, I went the first time into Dulles after a one hour stop in Accra. The next trip, at the end of 2011, it was through Houston. And then Houston changed planes to fly to uh, DC National. You know at one time there was Eric Air and they flew direct there to New York. There still is. They don't fly to New York anymore. No, yeah. because uh, it was taken over by Amcon. Okay. It went into receivership. Like they weren't paying off their loans, so technically the the government mortgage or uh, yeah. no, they they asset management. What's it again? Amcon Asset Management Company of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they you have a big loan, you don't pay, and it has infrastructure or major implications to the economy, Amcon comes and takes your stuff over. Any uh, last... So, Eric is in receivership. They were flying to London and New York, JFK. Right. Mm -hmm. But now, Nigeria Air is being launched in December is what I'm hearing. Hopefully. Yeah, I would say that's a big hopefully. Uh... The pensioners from Nigeria Airways said, y'all owe us $478 billion naira. So they have to pay that off. Mm -hmm. And I understand just last week they came to an agreement with those people. But if they're going to actually launch that airline, I used to work for Pan Am World Airways out of Miami. And I flew here um, for $175 business class. First time I came in 88. Wow. Now how much business class will cost now? <laughs> yeah. but, but you couldn't get that that was an upgrade mm -hmm. it was free if I wanted to sit in the economy mm -hmm. but I flew uh, from Miami to Paris Charles de Gaulle to Frankfurt to Nairobi and then jumped on Ethiopian Airways Ethiopian Airways is booming oh now. yeah they're good you know they fly direct from DC to Togo Yes. To um, Addis Ababa. Oh, twice a week. Yes. I, I catch that and flight that's to a Togo. Cheap flight. And in Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast. I'm flying there yes. in, in end of September. Yes. Mm -hmm. I told people that. I walk up to some of the travel agents and they don't know about that. Yeah. But because they actually use another flag carrier of Togo to go into the States. No. Uh, no. I, when it's, I flew, it's the Ethiopian airplane. Right. But they're using the agreement from Togo to do it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because so Togo doesn't have an international airline. They don't. And they have no visas. Nope. Uh, like Duty-free, tax-free, tax -free and all. They mm -hmm. have a, a port that's fairly efficient. They don't have much of anything else, mm -hmm. except a little culture. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you, mm -hmm. interesting you know about that. Only on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I, fly, I, fly, I flew Tuesday last year. and Friday, Saturday. I, I flew think. it in January. Yeah. Direct from, uh, I'm sorry, from Newark, New Jersey. Newark. Directly to, to uh, Lome. Lome. Yep. And then it comes here. The same plane, I think, comes here mm -hmm. and then goes back to Addis Ababa. Okay, sounds about right. Yeah. Right. Then, in, in closing, what do you think? Um, just from a, well, you're you're Nigerian now. You've been here. <laughs> I was going to say from a Black American perspective, but you still have that eye. The future of Nigeria. What do you see? Future of Nigeria. Yeah. Next ten years. Well, I tell you what. This next next election cycle is going to determine a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Come. January, February, March 2019. And, you know, they passed this bill that got signed by the president, not too young to run. Mm -hmm. And uh, it basically dropped the age limit five years across the board for each office. So what's the age limit now? For which office? President. It was 35, now I think it's 30. You can run for president at the age of 30 in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It, it, they were trying to make it 40 originally. And by the time 1999 came, they made it 35, which is the same as the U.S. Uh, senators can now be, they were 30 before, 25, and then, you, oh, wow. and then reps. Is it 21? 21. 21. Wow. Now, in the U.S., to be a U.S. rep, you have to be 25. To be a senator, you have to be 30. However, you've had illegal, unconstitutional senators, starting with Henry Clay, 
-hmm. He became a senator at age 28, an unconstitutional senator. Do you know that? You know that. He was Speaker of the House of Kentucky State Assembly. A senator died, and they nominated him to fill in the last six months of a term. Mm -hmm. So even the good old USA have been breaking that law from very early, and that was like 19, no, 1802. Wow. Either 1800, 1800 and two, yeah. Because he didn't run for election. He, he was nominated by the governor to fill in a term. So, the future of Nigeria. This next election cycle is going to determine a lot. It's kind of like predictable but unpredictable. Uh, it seems that the current president will be reelected. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of like staying above the fray because if he's signing it not too young to run, that means it's like, all right, y'all, come on, you know, give these old fat cats some competition before I go. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what I'm reading out of it between the lines. If, like I said earlier, 50 people control 80% of the bank money that's deposited in the whole country. Just 50 out of 200, almost 200 million people, right? If those 50 people decided, man, let's do this country right. right, it would snap and change in two, three, four, five years. But what will that class of people do? Now, the president doesn't become the president without paying homage to half of them people, at least. Right. That's the way I look at it. Just like anywhere else. So, if that logjam or that political class changes or dies off and their, their sons and daughters take over that money, it can happen so fast. Now, they say there's 20 people out of those 50 that could basically run the Nigerian government for almost 20 years. Is that what, right? Just one of them. And a lot of the usual names are the usual suspects. I don't have to <laughs> keep you here. I will say that off camera. <laughs> but it's not like these people aren't known. Some of them are quieter than others. But, you know, the so-called richest black man in the, on the planet is... Aliko. Aliko Dangote. Mm -hmm. But Aliko Dangote is not only Dangote. I mean, Dangote is not only Aliko. Let's put it that way. Okay. You know? <laughs> they use that vehicle... I understand. Called Dan Gote, the corporate entity. Yeah, he's all the wealth is attributed to him, but you know, it's a cash cow for a group of people. I understand. Yeah, of course, of course. I remember when I first came in here, I was in Victor Island. I don't know why I stopped where I stopped, and one guy said, "Yeah, you see that house over there?" I said, "Yeah, nice house." Yeah, I said, the guy that owns is only 32 years old. Just built it. I said, who's that? He said, uh, one of Dan Tata's nephews, mm -hmm. Aliko Dan Gote. I never knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you get that kind of wealth at age 32? Mm -hmm. He was already wired in, and most people hadn't heard of this guy. Well, they said his father was rich. Well, he had a real rich uncle. Okay. Dan Tata, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're one of the stalwart, wealthy families of the North, and they set their people up young, and he was set up, no doubt. But he had exclusive deals. He was the only one allowed to bring in sugar under license. Sugar, only one salt, and flour. Flour and everything. Yeah. Everything. So it's like, all right, well, who, you know, do you, are you a pure entrepreneur? Well, you're, you're definitely fronting for somebody to get that license. It wasn't like, how do you go get an exclusive license? This is under military days. Yeah, so, that's a so good he had, he had some favoritism. So, as I said, he's not Aliko Dangote alone. Mm -hmm. But that works a lot of places. The Rockefellers did that and everybody else, too. But, you know. I've been in his presence. He's a decent guy. Mm -hmm. He tried to go by Arsenal. And of course, those of course not. White nah, British, nah, hell, nah, 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 nah. He needs like, to. He needs the best like money. That's like coming into the U.S. and say, "I want the Green Bay Packers or the or the Dallas Cowboys." No, no, <laughs> no. especially maybe Green Bay Packers, but it's community owned. Dallas Cowboys never. 
Mm -mm. You know, maybe you buy a failed franchise, but I don't think any NFL team is going to be in that category of failed. You know, the uh, Panthers were for sale. Uh, Carolina? Recently. Yeah, recently, but they got bought. They got a buyer? Yeah, well, it was kind of it was kind of because the owner got caught didn't sexual Puffy harassment. Say he wanted it? Yeah, he didn't. He didn't, he didn't get it. He yeah, didn't get money. Well, he, he just jumped up and said, "Yeah." Man. I don't think he has the demeanor to run it anyway. Mm -hmm. he, he, who else said that? It was Puffy and Steph Curry, or so, like a whole team. Puffy and somebody else are going to get. Was LeBron together. involved? No, no. But I know Puffy's the one that made his mouth. You know, LeBron started a... Like, if they came over here and started some type of league, how successful well, it would be. Well, there is the Africa NBA League now. There's a Nigerian guy that, that owns the franchise and is sanctioned by NBA. Oh. So each country has a team. Well, not each, but several. I didn't know that. Yeah, and they're trying to uh, get rights uh, for broadcasting it, I think, this next season. Now, that's separate from the FIBA League, Federation of International Basketball Association. Mm -hmm. But there is a Africa NBA or NBA Africa, National ba Africa National Basketball Association, I think is what it's called. So I think there's like 12 teams, and they've only had like one short season, and that was only with six or eight teams. But this next season coming, whenever it starts, it's supposed to pick up and go from there. Now, I have a friend, if you were still around, named Oliver Johnson. Coach OBJ is his nickname. He's, he was, he, excuse me, he was a basketball coach at AB Uzaria campus for a long time. He's been here since 1969. Wow. Black American. He's married to a Yoruba lady here. <coughs> He got Lou Alcindor before he became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to come. In. Him and Nate Archibald and, mm -hmm. uh, oh, what's the guy's name? Oscar Roberts. Okay. <clears throat> they came and played in 1972-73 when he was with the Milwaukee Bucks before going out to the Lakers. So he and others have a long history. Oh, I told you about Lee Evans. He's my friend. 1968 Olympic gold medalist award. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's here. His bags are in my bedroom. Oh, he moved here. Or is he visiting? He, he's been coaching on and off here since 1975. That's a track guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Double gold medalist. Mm -hmm. World record holder in the 400 meters and the 4x4 four four for over 22, 23 years. He's here. Mm -hmm. He coached uh, Cross River State to... They're scholastic, you know, high school, if you want to call it that, secondary school, state team, five national championships in a row. Hmm. He got the governor to invest one per just 1% 1 of his entire budget into youth and sports development. And they went through every school, scoured the whole state of Cross River, which is where Calabar is. Mm -hmm. In fact, you need to go there if you haven't gone. Cross Rivers. Yeah. You need to go if you haven't gone. Kind of yeah. It was the first capital of Nigeria. Nigeria. But that's southern, southeast, south, right? South, south, south. South, south, south southeast, if you want to call okay. it that geographic. Okay. But they have a carnival at the end of the year. I heard about that, yeah. It wasn't so good this last year. Mm -hmm. People were complaining. I was there two years ago, and it was. I'm glad I went. Uh, bands and culture, dancers, etc., come from all over. Brazil, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, Tanzania, South Africa. As a matter of fact, the South Africans are pretty bold. Their girls come and dance topless just like they do in the culture of right. South Africa. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the governors would be watching and of course acting they like, okay, acting like British, you know. They say, okay, aren't you doing African culture? And they mm -hmm. come bring it to you and then you get kind of right. like this about it. But, yeah, that was... That is probably the best event culturally in Nigeria that has nothing to do with religion that you should come to. Okay. And hopefully this year they'll bring it back up. My understanding is that the current governor 
didn't really win the election and they were thinking about going to court and blah, 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 so he didn't just throw money around. That's what mm -hmm. I'm hearing, but I don't know. I'm not right there. <clears throat> but that, if you go to Calabar, the weather's different. It's actually tropical forest, but it's built up and nice and clean. The air has a lot more oxygen in it and so does the water. It's mm -hmm. like it's alive. It really is. Mm -hmm. No pollution. Very clean overall. Mm -hmm. uh, too much emphasis statewide has been put on Calabar versus the rest of the state, though. But at least they've done that, you know. And there's some historical ties to slavery. Uh, one third of all the slaves were, were exported from Cal Port Calabar. Wow. Out of the 50%. Etc. So that's another history to itself. Mm -hmm. um, Lagos is projected to have 27 million people. In Jesus. Jesus, the state or the okay, the, the city is the state or is it the state? The state, the state, the state. which is mostly the city. Mm -hmm. 27 million. Right now, 23.5 million. By the end of 2020, they're saying 27 million. Goodness. By the year 2030. 37 million by the year 2040 mm -hmm. 51 point something million people are projected to be in this metropolitan area infrastructure rise right Do that's why I'm working on okay. that okay. if they don't if we don't act and get that it'll implode on itself because mm -hmm. right now when it rains am I right or if there's a breakdown on one of the main arteries of a bus oh yes it's, it's, forget it you might as well turn around and go back home depending on where you have to go that day mm -hmm. So, if now, that part is solved, this city can survive. And it looks like we're going to do it. It has to. It has no other choice. Too bad you weren't here for the conference. My bad. We're in. You what? missed the treat. I recorded the audio. I don't have a video. Uh, yeah, I would have brought the camera, but, you know, we were. Yeah. It was last minute as far as me finding out. Yeah, I, w I would like to know. I don't know if you still want to leave the camera on. I want to talk about whatever you went up there to do. Oh, okay, that's all. Well, we'll uh, I'll, I'll cut it off, you know, but, you know. Hopefully you, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, but basically, me personally, I prefer Nigeria now. Nigeria is my yeah. favorite country now. Yeah. Nigeria and Senegal. I was never really a too big fan of Ghana. I like Ghana, but I love Nigeria. I, I don't know. I just, the people, the energy, and I just smell opportunity here. So, yeah. um, Nigeria is my favorite personally, but, you know, John, Mr. Cash has been here. 20 something years, 20, how long? 29. 29 years ish. now, so. Out of, December will be 30 years from the first time I arrived. Mm -hmm. All but about two years of that, I've been based here. Let's He's been here 29 see. years, is successful, so hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys find value in this and enjoy it. I appreciate it, till next time. Bye.